Hey guys, so we're going to be working on forgot password today on the website, but before we do, there's a few things I want to just address. So I got a question about whether we need Apollo Cogen anymore, and we can actually just remove it. So this is something we are using in the controller package. So if you just come over to the controller folder, you can do yarn remove Apollo Cogen and just remove the package because we no longer need it. So I've already run this. You can run that yourself if you want to get rid of it. Um, and then the other thing is the submit. So in our register controller, we need to make a little fix to the submit function because if we come over here and try to submit with, for example, bob at bob.com, this user already exists. So when I click register, I don't see anything here, but if I look at my console, um, we actually have an error already taken. So we wanna see the error here that this user has already been taken. So to do that, we can see in this response, we have data, register, and register has these errors. So we just need to normalize it and send it back. Uh, so what we can do is I can say response, and I can get the data, and I can get register. And I could print register here. And then I'm going to just say if register. So if there was any errors. We're going to return normalize errors and pass in register. And uh, yep. So it looks like it doesn't like uh, the types, so we're going to have to change the types. So here we're expected to return null um, from our submit function, but now we sometimes return a normalized error. Uh, so we can copy what we did with the login controller and uh, we'll use this key uh, string. So we also could return an object. And this may be a type that we use a couple times where it's an object that has a key as a string um, and this uh, the value is a string. So we might wanna make this into a type. So maybe we'll create a folder called types and we can put a type in there. So for example, this could be um, normalized error. I guess normalized error map is what I'll call it. And this can be an interface. Normalized error map. And we can just put the uh, key string in there. And now we can use this in multiple places. So I'm going to export it. So normalized error map or null, and we can use the same thing in register. Normalized error map. All right, so now we can build our code. So I'm gonna say yarn build. And it might break something on the other end, so our website. And the reason for that is because we're not expecting this normalized error type in our register con connector, I believe, or our, our form, that is. So we're expecting formic errors right now. And if we check, I think we changed it in the login. Um, yeah, so notice in the login, we expect an object or null. So here, maybe I wanna use that same type that I'm using over here, the normalized error map. Um, in my code over here. So I can what I can do is in my index.ts in the controller is export it. So I can export everything from types, and I should say dot slash types. So now I'm exporting a uh, TypeScript type and I can actually use this TypeScript type, I have to rebuild of course, um, in my connector. So I can import it like it would anything else. So from ab slash controller, and I want the normalized error map. And now we can return that. And we can use the same thing in our register view. So Instead of expecting formic errors back, we're expecting a normalized error map. All right, so let's go ahead and check our code now. Um, 
so we just need to get rid of formic errors since we're not using them anymore. I don't think we were using them over here, so we're good. So this was in our register view, we had to get rid of that. All right, so let's try registering with Bob. And nice, so we see the already taken error message pop up now. So that's all I wanted to do with that. Uh, there was one last change I wanted to make, and that was in the common directory, or common package, and that's in our user, uh, yup schema's user. So when we were doing a uh, the login schema, I meant to say invalid login on every single one, including the max for the email. So let's change that to invalid login. All right, so those are all the changes that I wanted to make. Uh, I'm sure we'll build common at some point. I don't really need to test this right now. So let's go ahead and get started on forgot password. So I'm gonna create a new module in the website called forgot password. And we're just gonna so follow the same method we've been doing. So I'm gonna say forgot password connector dot TSX. And we can create a UI folder and I'm gonna call this forgot password view. And in a forgot password view, we can kind of just actually just kind of copy, right? Because um, we're gonna use a lot of the same things that the login view is gonna use. So copied over the login view. So first thing I wanna do is come down here at the bottom and change login view to forgot password view. And now we're going to have a, a single form element or a single input where a user can put in their email. So we do not need a password. And we don't really need validation on this. Uh, they're just going to be in putting their email. And then if they give us an email that doesn't exist or whatnot, we just are not able to send them an email so they can reset their password. Um, we're going to need to update our form values. That's why this is red right now. So we no longer have a password, so we're gonna have to get rid of that. And you can see the errors go away right away at the bottom. I don't think there's any changes we need to make here. I don't think there's really any errors that we need to set. Uh, we can keep this for now, because it's uh, not bad to show this, uh, but we may we could change it. Uh, and we don't need to import the login schema. So then here, we can get rid of the password field we can keep the email field and the icon for it. We don't need to link to forgot password because we're on forgot password. And I don't think we need to link to register or login. You could if you wanted to. I'm just gonna have a single button that says reset password. And we don't need a class name. Um, at least, I don't know if this class name is something that Ant uses. I actually wanna test that out. I'm not sure why I kept the class name on this. Um, and I think we can keep everything else. So let's take a look at what this is gonna look like. At least let's render it. So I'm gonna come over to forgot password connector and I'm gonna say forgot password connector and we're just gonna render it. So forgot password view and the usual. So uh, we'll have just console log the values. And we return null. And this is going to be an async function. Submit this.dummy. And let's go ahead and create a route for this. So I'm going to create another route, and this is going to be forgot password. So forgot password connector. Um, I don't know why this this did this weird pathing right here where it went up to node modules. If it does this, you don't want to import that. So let's look at our other options. This looks like it's the only option for me to import forgot password. That's so weird. So we can get rid of this giant string and it should be up a directory slash modules slash forgot password connector there you go so autocomplete was being funny there and uh, 
Now that we have a URL to this, we can go to it and we can also link from register and login. So if we go to our login view, we have some links here. So here's one of them. So now I can turn the forgot password into a link. So we're going to say forgot password. And this is similar to what we're doing with this link down here with register. And I'm going to copy this because we also wanted to put this in our register view. Um, right here. Let me get rid of that. All right, so let's take a look at our app. Um, did it crash? Because it didn't look like it refreshed over there. All right, so I added some new files, so I'm going to have to restart the server. All right, so the server finished starting up. And if I come back over here, I can now click on forgot password and it should take me over. Awesome. And I can see this little forgot password uh, screen and I can say I'd like to forget my password for Bob. Click reset and we see the email. Awesome. So this is a good start. So I think I'm going to stop this video here. And then what we'll do in the next one is uh, connect it, create a controller for it, and actually call the forgot password resolver. So I'll see you guys in the next video.